Let's talk about insulated gate bipolar transistors. What do insulated gate bipolar transistors, or IGBTs, which is much easier to say, bring to the world of electronic engineering? Efficiency. As design concerns go, efficiency reigns supreme for a lot of applications. Whether you're working on a motor drive design, a solar application, or EV charging device, IGBTs can bring better efficiency, higher performance, and state-of-the-art quality at a lower price. Let's get into the details. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Jason Foster from Infineon and I explore the characteristics and trade-offs with IGBTs. We also investigate the benefits that Infineon's 1200 volt trench stop IGBT7, H7, and S7, and the 650 volt trench stop IGBT7, H7, and T7 bring to these kinds of designs, and how Infineon is furthering innovation in the world of insulated gate bipolar transistors. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Jason. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks, Amelia, for the invite. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about trench stop IGBTs today. But Jason, before we dig into the details, what all will we be covering today? So today we will be talking about Infineon's latest generation of IGBTs, the Trenchtop IGBT7 family. And within this family, we have four classes of IGBTs, the low frequency IGBTs being the 650 volt T7 IGBT and the 1200 volt S7 IGBTs. And these are gearing more towards motor drive applications. And then we will move into our medium frequency IGBTs like the 650 volt H7 IGBT and the 1200 volt H7 IGBT that are geared more towards power converter applications. And then we'll wrap it up. And uh, again, thank you for joining. Absolutely. Now, before we talk about Infineon's specific IGBT solutions, talk to me a bit about the characteristics and trade-offs of IGBTs. Sure. So... When we talk about IGBT characteristics, we design them with specific applications in mind. So for instances, uh, industrial motors drives tend to prefer short circuit capability and low conduction losses like VCSAT, where a high frequency application like PFC or power supplies, they can trade off that short circuit capability. And this allows for lower VCSAT as well as lower switching losses, which then reduces the size of components. And when you talk about short circuit capability versus switching energy, you see this triangular graph here on the right. Typically, when you have a higher short circuit, you tend to have a higher VC set, which is higher losses, as well as higher switching losses. Whereas when you move away from short circuit robustness and you have lower switching energy and lower VC set, a good way to think of this is that with higher VC set, you're limiting the transconductance or the carriers that are allowed to flow in high concentration during the short circuit event. And this thereby limits the power generated inside the device and, of course, ultimately destroys it. Jason, let's talk about trench stop IGBTs. Will you explain the differences between the S7, T7, and H7? Absolutely. This slide is a good slide intro because... It's discussing clearly defining the two family differences. S7 and T7 are targeting the low frequency, less than 20 kilohertz, which focuses on hard switching applications and they care about short circuit with these devices ranging in the three to eight microsecond range. They have a soft commutating EC7, which is our new NCON7 dial, as well as the controllability with the gate drive of the device. The H7 family is targeting your higher frequencies, greater than 16 kilohertz, and not needing that short circuit robustness that I talked about in the previous slide. And as we discussed earlier, they optimized with lower energy total switch for better efficiency and higher power density at higher frequencies. Okay, so Jason, for the T7 and the S7, what kind of applications would these solutions be a good fit for? Yeah, you know, what you are seeing here 
are targeting motor drive applications using inverter topology, like industrial motors, like water pumps, HVAC motors, heat pumps. And again, these IGTs are targeting low VC sat for low conduction losses with a soft rugged diode for low reverse recovery. This will help with designs lowering their heat seek requirements or even reducing their cooling footprint if they don't need to generate as much heat in the first place. Fantastic. Now, what kind of options does Infineon offer within these families? So you'll see here on this slide, there's the four packages that we've introduced. With the 650 volt T7s, we continue to focus on the industrial standard of TO2473 pin. It's a very common package and with its trademark screw hole for multiples on the heatsink. Whereas with the 1200 volt S7, we've now introduced new variants with the Kelvin four pin that gives an isolated emitter reference for the gate drive. So it doesn't have to see the tumultuous DIDT of the large emitter current out of the pin, which during the switch would give a large voltage bounce and it gives more control on the gate. We also now have released our TO247 Plus package with its characteristic lack of a screw hole mount. This allows for a much larger die to be placed inside the package, which you can see the 75, 100, and 120 amp capability. Of course, without the screw hole, these devices will need a spring clip to allow mounting to the heatsink. So, Jason, how does the Trench Stop IGBT7 T7 compare with Trench Stop and High Speed 3 H3? Can you explain all of that a bit? Yeah, of course. Uh, when talking about short circuit capability devices, the Gen 1 trend stop device targeted much less lower frequencies, like less than 16 kilohertz. And later, the introduction of the high speed H3 for those frequencies above 20 kilohertz and up to 40 kilohertz. Now, with the T7 with its overall dynamic conduction and switch dial improvements, allows it to scale across the whole frequency spectrum that the previous two technologies targeted giving the T7 a broader flexibility for these type of inverter applications. So when benchmarking the IGBT7 T7 versus previous Infineon generations, plus some of our competition, we compare total power switch versus total power conduction on the graph on the left. And also to the right, we break out each of the power dissipation components like IGBT conduction, energy on, energy switch off, as well as the diode conduction and reverse recovery energy. And you can clearly see the T7 compared to previous gen and our competition out lowers the conduction losses across the board. And this is indicative of the 1.35 VC sat, giving a 15% lower case temp due to lowest losses or to look at it, 25% higher power density in the same given volume. Also, some features involved here are improved humidity ruggedness and a three microsecond short circuit rating. We've introduced the rated diode we call the NCON7 with improved softness and reverse coverage characteristics. What about the performance of the 1200 volt trench stop S7? What kind of specs are we talking about for this solution? Again, we were using the graph showing the y-axis of total energy switch and the x-axis of total conduction losses. When looking at comparisons to previous generations and competitors, they all have 10 microsecond short circuit capability, but the S7 allows for a reduction of both VC sat of at 10% and total switching losses of up to 30% versus previous generations. You can see this with the 1.95 VC sat, which in previous generations were as high as two and a half and above volts. Again, the T7 has eight microsecond short circuit, but given the improvements clearly here, it has quite an advantage. Definitely. Now, Jason, what about the H7? What kind of applications are you seeing here? When starting to look at applications targeting the medium frequency range, you are looking at the H7 technology. The H7 sacrifices the short circuit capability to really drive switching and conduction losses down to the next level. And these applications targeted here are the AC to DC, the DC to DC, and the DC to AC topologies such as solar, welding, UPS, and newer applications that we are starting to see more and more today like energy storage and EV charging. The H7 is really adding the value for these applications in the 40 kilohertz and less by improving efficiencies and higher power densities not seen before with IGBT technology. 
What do you think are the biggest design benefits for the H7? It's clear the improved system efficiency for high frequency allows for greater increased power density, and that's power per square inch or per cubic inch for designs trying to reduce their footprint or just trying to push more power in their same system used today. This is possible with its VC set and total energy switch optimization. And in the next slides, we'll show some of the portfolio offering, including higher creepage at clearance. So what kind of options does Infineon have for the H7? Yes, so I alluded to in the previous slide, the 650 volt H7 has our TO247 3HCC, which stands for high creepage and high clearance. And then including the 1200 volt parts, we continue with the traditional TO247 3 pin and also to the TO247 4 pin that I discussed earlier, taking advantage of that Kelvin emitter pin, reducing the DIDT influence on the gate drive, which is very beneficial in those high frequencies, improving switch control and performance. And of course, the TO247 Plus package in the 3 and 4 pin configuration allowing for a much larger die for the spring clip mounting is giving much higher current densities of up to 140 amps in the package. It's quite remarkable. All right. So, Jason, how does the H7 compare to the S5, H5, or other similar solutions on the market today? So again, with this total energy switch versus total conduction losses graph, when you compare the 650H7 to previous generations and some competition that do not have short circuit handling capability, the H7 has a clear significant lower total switch loss, as well as a significant reduction in the overall VSAT rating. So when considering this comparative previous generations, all these improvements can lower the losses of up to 25%. And combined with an improved humidity and cosmic ray ruggedness, it's a real nice solution for your medium frequency applications. So what kind of performance can we expect from the H7? For this graph, we do something a bit different here, comparing the 1200 volt H7 without its short circuit capability, comparing it to previous high frequency IGBT generations and competition that do have short circuit capability. We also throw up the new IGBT-7 S7 with the short circuit capability just to show its similar VC set, but pointing out to the substantially lower switching losses to sacrificing this capability for applications that don't need it. So Infineon customers can really see the broad portfolio you have access to specifically targeting your custom application topologies. In comparison to other previous generations, the H7 has about 85% reduction in Eon losses and about 20% reduction in E-off losses compared to the previous H3 technology. Okay, so let's circle back to the T7. What do you think are the biggest takeaways that you'd like my audience to keep in mind when it comes to the 650 volt trench stop IGB T7 T7? The IGB T7 T7 is best-in-class price performance ratio for devices in the industrial motor drive. These features are indicative of the lower VC set of 1.35 and lower switching losses associated. It has the faster full-rated compact EC7 diode that I introduced, which is more efficient and softer than the previous Rapid1 diode in previous technologies. I had mentioned the improved high-voltage humidity ruggedness we follow the HVH3TRB standard, and you can sustain pulse currents of three times higher than the nominal rated value. And of course, these are uh, higher breakdown voltage values of 650 volts. So similarly for the 1200 volt trench stop IGBT7S7, what do you think are the biggest benefits here? The 1200 volt IGBT-7 S7 is really driving best in class performance in total losses and power density. It has the eight microsecond short circuits with stand time and excellent controllability, the full rated freewheeling dial with improved softness and a very tight parameter distribution enhanced humidity ruggedness. And again, the broad portfolio with high current options up to 120 amps. And I also want to point out that all of these IGBT-7 technology is being produced on our 300 millimeter technology wafers and allowing substantial capacity without sacrificing Infineon's superb quality. Jason, also with the 650 volt trench stub IGBT-7H7, 
what would you like my audience to take away from this IGBT solution? Yeah, so the 650 volt IGBT 87 is really showcasing its best in class price performance ratio, targeting your medium frequency converter applications, typically in the 40 kilohertz and less, improving the overall system efficiency and higher power density for smaller components and design. Again, the features here, the review is a lower VC set of 1.4 volts with lower switching losses, faster full rated compact NCON C7 diode with more efficient and softer than the Rapid1 diode, and the, again, improved high voltage humidity readiness of HVH3TRB standard. You can sustain a pulse current as high as four times higher than the rated nominal And again, with 25% lower losses than the previous generation. All right. And finally, let's talk about that 1200 volt trench stop IGBT 7H7. What do you think are the biggest benefits with this IGBT? Same as the 650 volt, the H7, we have best in class total losses in power density. When you get those higher frequencies, you can get much smaller components, giving a much more packed power density. Pulse currents of four times the nominal and excellent controllability. And with the full rated rapid diode, soft, ultra fast recovery, low QRR and low VFR, you have very small losses during the switch. And very tight parameter distribution, enhancing humidity and cosmic ray ruggedness. And again, the broad portfolio here have current options up to 140 amps. Fantastic. Well, Jason, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you again for your time. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE.